And this is seems like a perpetual theme uh, when it comes to dealing with the Chinese Communist Party. You, it's almost like you have to give up the things you cherish most to work with it, or perhaps not have them in the first place. Yes, and uh, this scene also tells us more about how the persecution works. Because maybe for many people they felt, oh, okay, the police will come, they will arrest practitioners, they will be tortured, which is bad enough. Uh, but that's not all of it. In China, every school, every medium or large workplace, sometimes even private enterprises, uh, the military, uh, news organizations, uh, almost every place, even your community, your neighborhood, there will be a Communist Party representative who is responsible to carry out the party policies. And sometimes this person ranks even higher than your general manager or your school principal. So uh, the entire nation is mobilized in the crackdown against Falun Gong. For example, uh, in, in this scene, if some university students are caught disseminating information about Falun Gong, then the party secretary may be demoted. She may be fired. And that's why you see husbands uh, forced to uh, divorce their wives. Children were kicked out of school because their parents are, are Falun Gong practitioners your colleagues, your classmates, your friends, everybody is mobilized to turn against you. Just like what you see in the scene, people are often forced to renounce their beliefs in front of their colleagues, classmates, in front of the people they love, they care about. And in front of everybody, they have to say things that they do not believe in. They have to tell the party lie. So in a sense, the crackdown completely destroyed the entire nation. What do you think the purposes of these very, very public forced confessions or denunciations, what do you think the purpose of these is? I think the purpose is to create an environment where everybody understands that uh, whatever the party says, uh, you just have to follow. Everybody needs to understand that you have to completely disregard whether something is true or not. They no longer want people to believe in what's true. They want people to only believe in what the party want them to believe. You know, I'm thinking of this other character, the young woman who basically was, participates in hanging uh, the banners that is shown early in the film, gets arrested, tortured horrifically, um, and eventually gets out of prison. And, but ultimately, she demands of the reporter, the Western reporter, that he tell her story in her name, even though he's telling her, I, I can get you out of the country, I can do it anonymously. She said, no, you have to do it in my name. People need to know this is real. Right, uh, Xia, uh, the woman you mentioned, experienced extreme torture, uh, which is actually uh, well documented by human rights organizations, uh, even the United Nations, in the crackdown against Falun Gong. Even in my previous films, we've depicted uh, quite a few, you know, uh, torture methods. In Letter from Mas and Jia, for example, Sun Yi was tied into a, in, into a very painful position for days. Uh, in The Bleeding Edge, we've seen practitioners' fingernails being pried out with uh, bamboo shoots. In Unsilence, for example, we have uh, practitioners burned by irons, uh, shocked by uh, electric batons. So violence and propaganda, the two most effective weapons uh, the CCP had. Well, you know, and in the face of this, and again, back to this theme that, that came out for me, which is, you know, how unlikely heroes are made. I mean, there's a lot of really innovative ways that in the face of, you know, the complete control of the media by the regime, right, 
that these practitioners of Falun Gong figure out how they can actually get the word out about the reality that they face and frankly just the reality about Falun Gong in itself. Right, speaking of complete control, I think many people uh, might not have uh, the idea of the extent of the control. Uh, in almost, well, there's, there's a government agency in China uh, for a long time, it is, it is actually called the Propaganda Department of the Central Committee of the CCP. But then they realized that's not the best translation, so they changed the name to the Publicity Department. But its sole goal is to completely control the media in China. Thousands of newspapers, hundreds of TV networks, uh, they, many of them receive dozens of directives from the uh, propaganda department in terms of what to report, uh, what, what word to use, what articles to censor. Hundreds and thousands of internet police patrolling the Chinese uh, social media space and, and the internet, which by the way is completely shielded off by the Great Firewall from the outside world. So you don't have access to YouTube, Google, Facebook, Twitter, not at all. And in this scenario, imagine how difficult it is for the Chinese citizens to say anything that is different from the party narrative. That's why the Falun Gong practitioners uh, employ various ways. For example, they would distribute uh, flyers door to door. They would uh, you know, distribute leaflets through balloons. They would sometimes uh, pass on uh, DVDs to, uh, to people. And there are also cases where they use loudspeakers with a timer. Uh, they hand the speakers on, in, a, in a public place or even sometimes near prisons, detention centers. And the timer would allow them to escape before uh, the, the broadcast would begin. Uh, so, so various ways to get their uh, voices heard. But what really amazed me was that despite the violent suppression, Falun Gong practitioners have never uh, employed violence in their own struggle. They've done everything they can in peaceful ways. Falun Gong practitioners' efforts perhaps is the largest nonviolent movement in the last 20 years. I would also say that this incredible innovation in dissemination of information across a country of, you know, 1.3 billion is, I, I just think, a completely unprecedented campaign of grassroots uh, peaceful activism. Yes, and uh, the uh, Chinese regime, of course, recognized how effective this campaign is. Uh, they've also taken the extreme measure. I'll give you two examples. One is across the supply stores where people can buy print paper. For a long time, they will have secret agents there uh, trying to find out who is coming to buy paper, you know, buy cartridges. Sometimes the paper is also marked. So, you know, they can trace back to see who is getting those things. Uh, another example, which by the way, uh, we show one of those uh, scenes in our film where Lee went to buy paper and the owner actually reported her to the police. In the other case, the uh, officials uh, put special devices on, on their vans and they would go through different communities trying to detect uh, whose printers are running. And based on how long it is running, they, they can see, well, maybe this is underground uh, material site that's being used to produce those, those leaflets.